Well, hi. Thanks for joining me here in my shop on this extremely cold, sunny morning here in uh, Aurelia. Uh, the temperature outside this morning when I got up was minus 30 C. <laughs> Holy smokes, that is cold. But I'm here in my nice warm shop. I came in earlier, turned on some equipment here, get those tubes warmed up. So I'm comfy cozy here. Now, I'm ready to do the next stage of alignment on this uh, CB radio. I've gotten a little more excited about it as I'm proceeding through it. I really regarded this, frankly, as a piece of junk. I hate to say that. I, I never usually think that of these, these things, but that's why I've had it for a long time and I really have just done nothing with it. With it. But I've had a number of surprises so far. Uh, first one is all these highly reliable components that are in this radio all these highly reliable capacitors. That was a pleasant surprise. Uh, number two, uh, it seems to receive, it seems to transmit so far, it seems to be essentially working, it just may not be working well. That's really what I think I'm striving for here. And who is that I hear? Why could it be? Yes, okay, so it's my cat Peanut and he wants me to go and I think give him some water or something like that. But I'm going to ignore him as best I can for a few minutes here while I lay out the groundwork. So the next stage of doing the alignment on the transmitter involves measuring the RF current coming out of this radio on its way to an antenna or a dummy load. In my case I've got a 50 ohm dummy load here. Um, I don't have any kind of of current meter that can handle being in line out of the output of this rate. I got nothing like that at all. Or do I? I have these two kind of goofy uh, CV SWR meters or whatever they are because it turns out they're both Micronta CV meters but they're really quite different in how they operate and their purpose is different too as I have discovered. And I'm learning along here trying to sort things out. So I have I have this meter connected and what it'll do is it'll read the RF power coming out of the uh, out of the radio and of course power power is a factor of current and voltage or current and voltage are factors of power I guess that's what I should say so uh, higher power higher current I would think so can I not use this uh, yeah I can't get any kind of precise amounts out of this. Uh, it's just going to go up somewhere. It's kind of a relative thing in a, in a sense. I mean, it does have some numbers on it, but really, do you believe this meter? When it says 3 watts, it really means 3 watts. But when it says 3 and then says 4, I think we can be pretty sure the output went up in here. And so part of the alignment process on the, and, and what we're doing next, by the way, is the PA uh, amp, the uh, power amp, the final tube, and the next thing is to control the output. Uh, the last alignment things I did in the last video, the last alignment, one thing I did, um, did not really affect the power output, but this next stuff will. Uh, two, I have two, I have a capacitor and a coil to adjust, and, uh, and that's going to change the output. So I think we'll be able to see that on here. So maybe I am well equipped. Now what about this meter? So this meter turns out to have an interesting role. You see the piece of wire sticking out of here? It's a little hard to see because it's because it's locked in there. So it's just a piece of wire, stiff wire. I'm going to use as an antenna because the real antenna is missing, of course, on this thing. Or if I have it, I don't know. I don't know I have it. So that goes in there. It, I'll, I'll make this a little better in a minute. You don't hook anything up to the back. Set this thing to field strength, it said. Put the meter somewhere. Key your microphone, turn on the transmitter. Adjust this until you get the pointer somewhere roughly in the middle. So it's not, again, it's nothing precise about this. Of course, I mean, look, it depends on this, it depends where you put this, it depends on the kind of antenna you're transmitting into, on and on and on, if you want to get some actual numbers out of this. But that's not the idea. The idea is you transmit, calibrate, you note the reading, and then you start doing things to your radio, mostly trimming back the antenna. Yeah, it used to be a standard thing when you're setting up your CB radio. I'll show you on this antenna here. There's a little Allen uh, screw in here. So you would loosen that off and then you'd slide this up and down 
Not very much. Just, I don't really know because I frankly never did this. Okay, never really did this. Slide it up and down in order to make the antenna very resonant at the frequency you're interested in. And, and so how do you know? So you're watching the field strength go up and down on this as you make these adjustments. That's the concept. So this is a handy meter, field strength meter. I'm going to put it now in its official location. I don't know, is that, is that a good location to put it? For now, I'm going to put it up here. You know, it's going to get cooked up by this guy because he's. I switched him on for heat. <laughs> it's my, my shop bench heater here. Where can we put this at? See, I'm a little worried about this bare wire floating around inside my shop. How about we put it... Uh, For now, I'm going to put it quite. I'm going to put it way over here. I mean, we're not going to do anything with it right away. I don't think. Oh, I'll take that back. We are going to do some stuff with it right away. Okay, let's leave it right where it was. Good thinking, champ. <laughs> what I'm thinking is, I'm going to fool around with this radio transmitting to try to figure out this. Try to figure out this. Figure out if I've really got the equipment I need uh, to do the trick here. Uh, now the adjustments that we're aiming for is this, this big capacitor right here and then there's a coil right down in here I can access them both from this side what I'm wondering is oh, how much difference can this make in the output of this radio uh, and if, if, if you could make this radio pump out a huge amount of power like let's say 20 watts which I'm sure is not possible but if it was and you managed to get things adjusted so 20 watts are coming out of here what's going to burn up in the radio. Something may burn up inside the radio. So, I mean, there are some limits to how much power you can drive out of these things before you do damage. They're not... This is designed for, I don't know, what was it? Four watts? Four watts, and then you have to put some uh, caveats after that statement. Four watts when measured at... Da, 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 da. Um, but, you know, if I'm going to talk to that guy in Alabama, I need every little watt I can get. So, that's on my mind, too. Well, let's see if we can get these meters working in our favor. So all I need to do, because uh, I'm quite comfortable with transmitting with this now, into the dummy load, not into this antenna over here. But we can pretend the dummy load is a mini, mini antenna, because it sticks out here a bit. It's going to throw some amount of signal into my shop. I'm sure of that. Well, I'm not actually sure of that, to be honest with you, but let's find out. <laughs> that's, that's what this is all about. We're set to RF power here. We're set to calibrate here. And then make this thing uh, sensitive. Uh, let's put some power to the radio here. There we go. First thing we should uh, listen for is uh, skip. But I, I don't have. Well, I don't have my other radio here. Well, that guy's warming up. Let's pop on this guy here. Rumor is 28 is a very popular channel for a skip. I don't know why. Oops. I was holding it like this and pushing the transmit button. How do you like that? And just... Nothing there. Okay, enough time's gone by now for this guy to be ready, I think. And it has no antenna, so we have to turn this thing right up to hear any any action. Turn it down. We're doing this with uh, full voltage supply to this. We need to watch both these meters. We want them both to kick up. This one last time went up straight up to one watt. I don't know what this one's going to do. It's off this little antenna here. There we go. Testing of the meters. So this was one and a half, and this guy, what number did he come up to? Two and a half on the SWR scale. Field strength. Yeah, it just says one, two, three, four, five. So on the, uh, using the field strength scale, three. But again, three doesn't mean anything. Let's pull the antenna out here. Let's fool around and get used to this thing. Nobody's home. That's my favorite, uh, my new favorite phrase. 
three. I'm sorry. Looking at the wrong scale. Yeah, three on the bottom. Okay. Calibration control. A little dirt in it. Turn it up full. So we'll, we'll calibrate to the number two here. And I'll show you why in a moment. Oh, dirty, dirty, dirty control. Okay, so we have the number two on here now. So I want to move it. So we're at this point, we're, we're this far. We're one thumb finger width away. So if I double that distance, we should see a reduction of uh, a pretty significant reduction. A factor of four, wouldn't that be the case? So this meter shouldn't show us too much. I just changed the lighting in my shop here a little bit. can see the meter a little better. Ready again? So will it get to two? And it's higher. So this is the kind of stuff that I, I want to become aware of. Let's put it far, far, far away. Far away on top of my scope. Right up by the big screen TV that's up there. You can still see the pointer. Here it is. What do you say now, buddy? Now it's a little lower. Two and a half there. Back to here. Just, like just get that a little better there. There, that's even better, better. Okay, some more experiments. Watch the number here. And the number is three and three quarters. Oh, what have you done to your antenna, Jim? Three and three quarters. That's good. You gotta be careful. This big piece of bare metal floating around in my shop here. Springy piece of metal. You know, it could fall out and go down into. Yeah, yeah, down into. There we go three and a half. Let's rotate it here, 90 degrees. Roughly, roughly 90 degrees. Almost three. Now this could just be proximity to where the antenna, uh, antenna is. Almost three. Let's put it straight up again. Do we get isn't it three and three quarters? Three, three and a half plus a bit. So, okay, that gives me some idea of the sensitivity of this as I'm moving around the shop and moving things around. Uh, I think I think it's going to work. I wasn't watching this power meter the whole time, and I think neither were you because it was just out of view. What is it saying now? Let us see. Just over one watt, according to that. It's actually calibrated in watts. Um, so let's look at the SWR on this meter. SWR into a resistor. Calibr I gotta throw it all the way up to calibrate. Can't get there. Similar to the other SWR meter, the field strength meter we've been using up here. When you use this as SWR, you get pretty much the same reading. Very low. No concern with excess power ending up being consumed in the output of the radio. And again, this is a tube radio. I'm not so sure it's the same. Leave that, leave that, leave that. I'm not so sure it's the same concern as a more modern transistorized receiver. Okay, you know what? I think I'm all set then. Um, so what I should do, I'm going to reread the instructions. Maybe I'll look at the, you know what? We'll do it together. We'll read the instructions carefully and then attempt to pull it off. And I don't I think the scope is in, involved here. I'm going to just move this because I don't want any excess anything in there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let's take a look at the uh, instructions here. 
Okay, so the first thing I want to do is give a shout out to the uh, website uh, from which I'm uh, benefiting tremendously with the information about the radio I'm working on. And it's from this website here, cbtricks.com. And I'm going to give you a moment to, 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 uh, to read this. I'm smart enough to zoom it up too. Um, Okay. Supporters of CB Tricks paid for the hosting, so you could would have this file, and that's true. So thank you very much. Uh, and there's lots more information here about CB Tricks. Uh, that seems like a a, a web website. If you're doing CB stuff, you should really be checking out this this website. So uh, it's just a guy like me. Uh, he has a day job, and he does this in the evenings, I guess. And the, the, the fantastic thing is, uh, this information is here for us to benefit from. Uh, down, 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 down to, uh, I have a feeling we're looking at the wrong part here. Right, this is the wrong part, so let's stop here for just a moment. So of course, this instrument is where I've got the CB antenna, uh, CB uh, watt meter sitting. Okay. Uh, now, the real, the real place we want to be is here. Now remember to zoom it up. I apologize for having not zoomed these things up in the past. If you're looking at it on your phone, good luck. Preliminary power amplifier adjustment. So this is preliminary adjustment. You know, shame on me. It might have been obvious yesterday, uh, my last video, when I was working on this part, that I'd never read ahead. Oh, shame on me. You should always read through these things. I should tell you about my experience in grade eight where I learned that. In grade eight, a teacher announced, we're having a test today, kids. I'm putting the test out face down. So we put these pieces of paper on our desks face down, just like always. And he said, when I say now, you turn it over, read over the test carefully before you start, and then start, you've got 10 minutes to complete this test. Go. Okay, so the pages flip over, I flip mine over, I quickly scan it because that was my practice. I noticed the last statement, it's kind of weird, I read it, it says, now sit quietly and watch all the rest of the students who didn't read over the test. So I did that, I just sat there, and sure enough, people, you know, the test had you jumping up, yelling your name, running around your desk, all kinds of idiotic things. And one by one, these people were making it through the long list to the last statement, which was, don't do any of this, just sit and watch. There's only about five of us who sat and watched the whole thing, so I learned my lesson there. Well, apparently, I didn't learn my lesson because I didn't read ahead. <laughs> didn't read ahead here. And what do we find when we read ahead? Okay, power, power amp adjustment, power amp neutralization. So a little bit of a feedback thing going on here to try to, I believe, prevent uh, prevent oscillations, I think, I think. Final power amplifier adjustment, L9C49, that's the same two that we're gonna do next. So, L9, L9, RF line current is typically 230 milliamps minimum, 200 milliamps, so I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this number since I can't measure this in milliamps. I suppose I could calculate it I don't know. I, I don't know what the voltage is that's going out to that resistor. If I knew the output voltage and I know the resistance of the resistor, I can calculate the actual wattage. Hey, we will do that at some point, for sure. That'll help me calibrate my little meters too. And you should do that sooner than later, in fact. You should do that next. Maybe I should do that next. Okay, let's do that next. We're going to try to measure the voltage output. Uh, going to the uh, antenna. Now that's at 27 megahertz. The only thing I've got that's going to do that, I believe, is my scope. Okay, you know what? Let's give that a try first. Let's see if we can come up with a measurement, a more, a more certain measurement of the output power of this thing. I'm, I'm pretty interested in that part anyway. Great. Okay, measuring output power. I think the first thing we need, we need to do here, I thought I heard something. No. Imagination. First thing we need to do here 
is measure this resistor and see if it really is what I think it is because it's, it's hidden in there. I didn't make that. I got that from somewhere. Somewhere. Uh, okay, here we are. Right here. Right here, Tim. Okay, careful now. This is actually plugged into the radio. Let's pull this out. Okay. So, resistance of this. Click right here. Seventy-two ohms. Okay, on the two hundred scale. So it's seventy-two ohms. Seventy seventy ohms. Not fifty. How big a difference is that? Hmm. Dummy antenna. Hmm. I think I have another one of these somewhere. I think I'm gonna scrounge around and see if I can find it in case it's a fifty. Good luck on finding it. Let me check. Okay, so I, I decided to bite the bullet, wreck my ham shack, and bring in my ham radio uh, antenna tuner. And uh, this also reads power, reads reflected power, and SWR can be developed in here. Um, its sensitivity is 30 watts full scale, or 300 watts full scale. This side's the, uh, the, uh, the, power, the forward power side. So, you know, the radio's only going to put out a couple of watts. It's only going to raise this just a little bit. Not much at all, but that's, that's what it's going to be. Um, I have quite a few settings here. One of the most important ones is... is... dummy load. So when I have it switched all the way over here, or for that matter, all the way over here, it's hooked up to a 50 ohm dummy load inside that can take quite a bit of power. So I don't have to worry about this, that's the thing. I don't have to worry about frying this. Not with this little radio. Um, so if you notice it says tuned and bypass. We'll be using it in bypass mode, I, I imagine, pretty much the whole time. The bypass means that all the uh, inductances, the capacitor, the coil stuff that's inside here, and, and all, none of this matters. It's, it's just not involved. It's just literally a switch between inputs on the back. So I have a number of inputs, coax 1, or sorry, coax 2, coax 1, balanced line, and there, which is where we're probably going to have it, uh, for switching on the dummy load. But I did go ahead and I hooked up this antenna into the back of it. And we may even experiment with the other CB antenna I have, uh, which is intended for the little walkie-talkie. But I have no idea what kind of impedance it might present. It could be some specialized thing for that walkie-talkie, not necessarily 50 ohms at all. Okay, uh, so... Uh, dummy load, I didn't put it in there yet, but we're still reading the resistance on it. Here it is. Resistance is very consistent, we know that now, and we'll stick it here. This will be coax 2. Oh, wait a minute, that's interesting. What am I doing? The dummy load is built in. Now we have two dummy loads. Hey, that's just that much more experimenting I can do here. Great. So, our radio's still on. Don't forget that. I should, I should be leaving the volume up on it so I don't forget it's on. And this is the material. We're on the dummy load. We're on the. In, I gotta be specific now. We're on the internal dummy load. Um, three watts. So I think if I leave this button out, the scale here is 30 watts. If I push it in, the scale is 300 watts. I don't think we're going to see much on a 300 watt scale. You see a little bit of pointer movement here. What happens on the reflected side, based on previous testing, we probably won't even see this, this side move. Hey, let's see. There we go. Holy smokes. Okay. <laughs> what to say about it? This is saying I'm putting out 12 watts. More than that, this is saying I'm putting out 20 watts. 20. Come on. Are you serious? 
Okay, so on the 300 scale... Oh, I'm reading this wrong. Back it up. It's not 10. That's 1. 1, 5, 10, 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, Jim. 1, 2, 3. So where are we at? 2. Roughly 2 watts. That was really very similar to uh, to the other reading on, on the on the El Chipo meter. Good. Uh, reflected power. Watch the other meter now. Yeah, it's not even moving. So all the energy is being dissipated in the internal um, the internal resistor in there. Now, let's switch this now. Okay. So we are now hooked up to the 70 ohm resistor. There we go. Right up to two. No, no reflected power visible on there. Now, do you think it's really 50 ohms in there? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, yeah, leave this up a bit, Jim, just to keep you amount. I have another 50 ohm termination here, but I don't dare put power into this little guy. This is just for terminating signal wires. I think if I put any wattage in here, this thing won't be any good. The radio seemed to change. Now, with my imagination, or this thing's characteristic changed a bit. Okay, we'll put it down to imagination. I got a pretty good one, so. Um, what are we going to do now? Now we want to determine the sensitivity of these adjustments uh, before actually making them. It sounds a little kooky, but that's what I want to do. So, we're going to hit the transmit, going to watch the meter, I'm going to fool with this right here. I'm going to return it back to where it is. Right now, it's just slightly lower than 90. It's about like this. Just slightly lower. These plates are, there is something going on in this radio. It wasn't me, was it? Okay, now of course this piece is active in transmit. So touching this, I don't know what it would prove. Um, this should be grounded. These plates should be grounded. When I touch it here, I should be just bringing the screwdriver into contact with a grounded term. It shouldn't be any different than doing this, really. <laughs> so I say. Okay, so the deal here, there, change sound again. Surely, goodness, this is make. I mean, this is go or no go here. This can't be a half. Okay, I'm ready. I am ready. The switch here, incidentally, is wired in such a way that as you pull it down, you break the receiver circuits before you make the transmitter circuits. Just in case you're curious about how they manage to keep this thing from blowing itself up, I think that's one of the ways there. Okay, uh, sensitivity, right. First, I'm going to key it, touch it, and see if the meter jumps. Good luck, the meter's hardly up on, on scale, so how am I ever going to see this? There we go. Yeah, of course not, no jumping, just as expected. Screwdriver's in. Okay, this is easily moved. There we go. Oh, look at that. Oh, it makes a big difference. Highly sensitive. No doubt about that. And we will now explore the other guy. That's this slug right here. Okay, again, if I'm using a metal tool, we're going to check sensitivity. Ready? None. Screwdrivers in. There we go. Not, not, not nearly as critical. The capacitor is very critical. 
Let's take a look at the circuit uh, diagram for this now before we really jump into trouble. Just, just, just we'll stop your breathe. This is what we're doing here. Connect test equipment. We did that. Adjust the Pi L output network. That's what we're doing for maximum power output while keeping PA plate current at 22 milliamps or less. Th this is this is the problem I have. Knowing I'm at 22 milliamps or less. Whichever gets most output, adjust the Pi L output network, maximum power output while keeping plate current. Whichever gives most output. So I guess you're adjusting the Pi and the L, and that's what it's talking about, whichever gives the most. It will save time to make a rough adjustment before neutralizing the PA, because the neutralizing is the next step. After neutralizing, make the final PA adjustment. PA is aligned by simultaneous adjustment of the plate tuning, L9, and PA plate coupling, C49. Some more information over here. I've got to try to absorb this. Adjust L9 for a dip in the PA plate current. Resonance. So you're at the point of resonance when you see the dip. Uh, I think this is a dip meter. Dip meter time. It's a common thing ham radio guys or anybody operating a transmitter would do using a thing called a dip meter. I have one, but it's, it's not working. Adjust C49 for the desired PA plate current at the dip. So we get the dip, we adjust 49 for the desired plate current. And this, you remember how sensitive C49 was? This is turning up and down the output of this guy. Coupling will increase as the capacity is decreased. Coupling of what? Coupling what? Make the last adjustment that of tuning L9 for a dip. So you want to make sure, I guess, as you do C49, this dip point is moving. They got to keep going back to L9. And the last thing they say is, make sure you've knocked this down before you declare victory. Use L9 to dip down the, the plate current. So the plate current, I think I can just read the power on these meters and determine the plate current. Huh? Could that be wrong? Could that be wrong? Just take a glance at this neutralization. Normally neutralization only needed when V8 is replaced. Okay, so lots, lots of instructions. Now look at this thing. Yikes, what's that? Figure 6. Let's just take a quick look. What's it saying about figure 6? saying anything about figure six. See figure four, clockwise. Hey, where's the uh, reference to that diagram? Key transmitter, tune through. Key the transmitter, note the PA grid voltage. PA grid voltage as L9 is tuned through resonance. If the PA grid voltage increases when L9 is backed out of the coil, oh my god, then the value of C44 is too small. Oh boy, this this looks like a long... This is the neutralization thing. Increase the capacity a little bit and do this other thing again. Okay, so we see what's going on here. The neutralization adjustment is a big deal. How do you even know if it needs it to be done? Like they're saying, you only got to do this when you replace this too. Uh, how, how do you know? How about you only have to do this after 40 years have gone by? I think that, that would probably be written in here too if they had any notion. A guy like me would be doing this in the year 2006. Nah, 2019, just kidding. 2019. Readjust the PA tuning controls. RF line current is typically. 230. Okay, so wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's giving some plate current numbers somewhere up here. Adjust the network while keeping the plate current at 22 milliamps or less. Plate. The PA plate current. Plate current, Jim. Plate current. Look what you're reading there. It's not the uh, plate current. Okay. And then we go down here and talk about RF line current. Oh, boy, I almost misread this, didn't I? Because I had that diagram in my head when I'm reading through this. 
and I missed what it said there. Power output. PA plate current. So how are we measuring the PA plate current? It says connect test equipment as in section 431. Section 431. Uh, section 431 is in the other part of the manual. There is section, this is section, this is figure three. Whoop, did I read something wrong there? Connect test equipment as in section 431. Section 4, 4, 4, 3, 4, 3, 1. Test equipment. Connect test equipment as shown in figure 3. Make sure I connect 50 ohm antenna. Not a 70, buddy. 50. Connect that to that. Connect that to that. So I, I did all this kind of stuff. And I've undone some of it, but there's nothing new here. So we're really looking at this, these connections, which I've already made all three of these before. Scope. I haven't done anything useful with the scope yet. I'm going to do it now because I'm going to try to measure the uh, voltage on the, uh, on the resistor. Okay, so really, I got a good idea of what's coming. I got a good idea. I think it's a good idea, what I got in my head. <laughs> We're going to find out soon. Okay, so somehow I want to try to read the voltage on my scope of what is reaching the resistor here. So I think what I'm going to do, is I'm going to put a T in the, in the line there. And see if we can't T off the output that's coming here over to my scope. It might be easier here. Jim, this radio's on. Yeah, no antenna now. Right, no, no sound. I need some big red flashing light in here. Something a little funny about that. whole connector is spinning. Ay, yikes. I swear this is plugged in. This is just plugged in here. Is that right? Am I seeing that right? That's not actually part of the radio? Oh my gosh, it's, it isn't. Ah. It's, it's like a phono plug, but not quite. This, this part doesn't slide over something, this part slides inside something. I think I have another one of these. <laughs> Didn't I say that just a while ago? You know, that's actually like a, like a standard uh, car radio connector there, a car radio antenna connector. And I, I certainly have, I have an extension. Let's put this back in. Okay, that explains why it was spinning while I was trying to tighten up that. Okay, another little thing learned. Man alive. Just keeps on coming. Okay, we'll hook this up to the, the MFJ meter. J tuner. So that's an antenna. Antenna dummy uh, on the back. Nothing. Just some. And dummy load inside here. Now the connection to my scope. Oh, you know what? There's a really easy way. I didn't need to put that on there. But I'm going to leave that there. This splitter, I don't think that's going to have a bad effect. I just connect down here with my scope leads. Scope, wait a minute. Scope, yeah, sure. 
For a moment I was thinking the scope's 50 ohms. No, 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 no. There we are. Works like an antenna until I do this. Oh, still works like an antenna. So the objective here is to make a voltage measurement with the oscilloscope on the transmit. That's our objective. And is this going to cause a problem? It's having a termination, I mean it's so short. And if we're up in the gigahertz, I'm sure it would, but down where we are, I don't think so. Interestingly enough, you know what, this is my outdoor antenna. And I can actually connect that on the back here. Why not to the well? Hmm, since I hooked up the scope, uh, is that interfering with things? Oh, it is, isn't it? Well, it's not interfering. It's that. Here there's no antenna, but when I have the scope hooked up, yes, there is an antenna. I think that's what's going on here. So we want to hook up to these lines here for fun and pleasure. So now we even have an outdoor antenna option. Lousy, but it's there. So. So resistor, outdoor antenna, resistor, lousy indoor antenna. No, this is the lousy indoor antenna. This is the resistor. It's easy to get confused the way they've numbered things here. Easy for me. And bypass means straight through. Bypass means, I already explained that, straight through as opposed to all the tuning things. So, no, 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 yeah, yeah, well, I explain that. Good. On the resistor. Now, getting the oh, okay scope um, I'm gonna guess there's quite a voltage coming out of here so we'll go from, best I can do at this point with this lead is five volts per division oh I'm willing to bet it's a lot more than five volts and uh, it's just gonna put a bar here it'll be a little hard to see uh, I think let me adjust my lights lights cameras and action a little hard for my camera to focus, but good. So what do we expect? Let's go over it again. Um, if this thing is, let's do some calculations. If it's putting out one watt, and it's putting out one watt into 50 ohms, how much voltage do you need to get one watt out of 50 ohms? Uh, 50 volts. Uh, this is such a sim simple question. I'm just floored that I can't just work it out in my head instantly. Maybe I just calm myself down a little bit. Think a little harder about this. So, what voltage gives you one watt on a 50 ohm resistor? Uh, not much. So, if it, if it was one one volt, it's problem here is it's E squared over R, which is a little hard to calculate in your head. So if R is 50 and watts is 1, E squared has to be 50. Is that right? That would give you 50 over 50. E squared, so square root of 50. Well, that's not very much. That's uh, 6, 7, that's seven. Seven volts. Okay, that's what we think we're going to see. Seven volts. I got a number. What, is it right? I got no idea. So seven volts. We just barely moved this line. Okay, we're going to put this on... Uh, we can leave it on DC. It should be zero DC on this. We're going to find out very shortly. Are we all set? Is everybody ready? We got everything ready to go. I'm ready. So I'm not going to look at that first. I'm going to look at this meter. Uh, in order to be sure that we're getting the same effect we were before. There we go. So it was showing one watt on here. Why Why slightly less, I don't know. Now I'm going to look at the uh, scope. Oh, it just barely, barely, barely moves. 
So to make that bigger, I'm going to put a proper, a proper. Oh, wait a minute, that was a mistake. Wait a minute. Okay, so I have the scope connected as if it's my outdoor antenna, and my outdoor antenna connected as if it's the scope. Hold on a second here. I really boob this up. Multiple booberation going on here. What did I do? What's the best way to correct my error? That's 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 usually that's one of my usual <laughs> one of my usual things. Okay, this is a dumb way, but this will do it. Okay, let's put the antenna where the antenna is supposed to go. I could have done this in an easier way. I'm changing the lead on the scope anyway. Try to keep track of what you're doing, Jim. Okay, now we actually have my outdoor antenna almost connected. So, uh, resistor on the back. Lousy antenna right there. Outdoor antenna. Almost. And resistor. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna I have to go throw a switch here so that when we connect to the outdoor antenna, it, the outdoor antenna is really there. Just take me a second. Well, ten. So I got all the way into my uh, studio there, or my office uh, shack, whatever you want to call it, in order to switch on the antenna, and uh, the antenna switch is here. <laughs> it's just a bunch of hanging wires in my where this came from. So won't worry about the outdoor antenna because that's a superfluous matter anyway right now. So we're on the resistor. Oh yeah, I was changing the lead, changing the lead on the scope so we make a better voltage measurement. trying to read the the output here okay voltage measurement on trans transmitting this is now why did a stupid thing that was stupid I didn't have to do that I didn't ah that's okay that's fine you use this here stop your muttering hit the button right off this. There we are. Now we're getting something good. What are we getting? What are we getting on here? Round one watt. So we'll actually make a reading here. Five volts per division. Let me put this in the middle. It might just be a little easier to, uh, to get a, a number. There we go. Right there. That's one, two, and a half. So two and a half, five peak to peak. So but let's go two and a half. Two and a half at five is ten around twelve volts. Hey, that's pretty close to seven. Okay, things are adding up uh, pretty good. So if now we can calculate the other way. If we are actually getting so twelve Volts, but RMS is not. It's not going to be 12 volts RMS. So you got to get about 0.7 of 12. What would that be? Nine? Let's say nine. That's really close to seven. Great. 
So we have nine volts across 50 ohms. Is this really 50 ohms? We, we, we never did really determine that. So let's just, let's, let's check it out. I've never ever tested this kind of stuff. Let's check it out. And to check it out, the easiest way would be open this. And just pretend we're, my meter is now the transmitter looking into the box here. Can you connect on there? Boy, if somebody, once again, if somebody had told me, hey, when you go in your shop today, this is the kind of stuff you're going to be doing. You know, I come in here and literally within minutes, I'm off on a new track. Not necessarily a good track. Resistance measurement on the resistor. Okay, so I see 54 ohms. Let's switch it. Oh, this is quite interesting. So this is on the outdoor antenna. This is what's interesting. This is now this this is now this antenna here. Really? Come on, it shouldn't make any difference if I touch this. A little troubleshooting on the antenna. Oh, did you see that? No one does. So I I yeah, I saw it. Yeah, I don't know if you saw it, but I saw it. So apparently my uh, efforts at making this antenna really cool, total flop. Look at that. No wonder it's not working. Okay. And what I'm reacting to is that, but you could see that, is occasionally as I wiggled the wire, I got a, a, almost 50 ohms here. I, I, you know, I don't know. Okay. So we know that that guy's bad. Hey, we're, we're moving along here. We also know this is 50, 50. 50 something. Let's say 50 and let's say 10 volts. 10 volts because of easy calculating. 10 volts and 50 ohms. So wattage is uh, <laughs> I think I have to get a piece of paper out. I squared R power is uh, voltage times current we don't know the current. I know their uh, resistance is 50. Oh my God! <laughs> what a bozo! Okay, well, uh, let me just somehow I got a gap in my brain here. Let me fill it. Fill it with coffee. Okay, let's see if I can kind of derive the formula here. So power equals uh, voltage times current. Voltage times current, um, but we don't know. Let's see, power also equals uh, I squared R. We don't know the I, that's the problem. These two formulas aren't going to help me because I don't know what the I is. Got to get rid of the I. Um, so to get rid of the I, we could change the I to, let's see, this would equal I equals E over R. So we go E over R squared times r. Okay, and if we expand that out, I think I see what's coming here. We'd have e over r times e over r times r. So we can cancel the two r's, we get e e, and we get e squared over r. That's right, now I remember. <laughs> okay, I remember now. So e squared, so that we're using 10 volts, that's 100. And the R, we're using 50, we get 2 watts. Hey, that's right in the ring. That, you know, that's for what I'm doing here. That's all yeah, internally self-confirming or something of that sort. Excellent. So now we do know the voltage coming out of here. Yeah, I could have done this very, very simply by just saying, well, if this, if the way this works is you have a 50 ohm antenna and you manage to get 2 volts, or let no, 100 volts onto a 50 ohm antenna, you would then have I times E. Wow! <laughs> that, would be, that would be a little big, so let's, let's go the other way. Wait a minute, this isn't working right. 
I time yeah that's because I'm not using I I'm using okay never mind I'm all confusing myself when I don't need to because I previously unconfused myself and should have stopped right there what's this all telling us now looking at the voltages coming out of this uh, c coming out of this radio are on the order of 10 and 20 volts something of that sort this isn't like a ham radio uh, pumping uh, current into a resonant antenna and creating a uh, reactive voltage of thousands of volts at RF and you can easily burn yourself and that's one of the things I've been a little worried about but I've never heard of anybody burning themselves on a, on a little radio like this and by the way when I'm using my ham radio I'm transmitting similar amounts of power 5 and 10 watts uh, shown on this meter for the things I do on, on ham radio. I, I'm not putting out 500 watts into some huge antenna above my house. That's not what's happening here. It's a, it's a trickle onto a piece of junk antenna, but it's good enough these days. So now we're ready to make the adjustments, I think. I've had this radio on for quite a while. Um, I think we're ready. So I'm just going to reduce a few things here. In particular, I'm going to remove the outdoor antenna connection. Make sure we are on the resistor here. Oh, no we're not. We're, on, we're not on the resistor, we're on the voltmeter. So, if we look at the manual, and the manual says uh, 22 milliamps of plate current. Now that's that's a different issue. I kind of set myself up for the wrong issue here. Come to think of it, it's the plate current I got to measure. Let's take a look at the schematic. Maybe there's an opportunity here to, to do it. Uh, let's take a look at the schematic. Okay, so here's the uh, power amp. Um, and I'm suffering from room effect here. I got this image in my face now. I can't remember why I'm looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Hey, it's, it's, this is a live video. You know, uh, what I don't see, you get. Okay. Um, I, I literally forgot what I was about to do. Oh, I just want to look at the circuit uh, layout here. So there's that capacitor I'm gonna I'm gonna be adjusting, and the coil is right here, L9. else in the line here that's adjustable. Any one of these could be like these components could be bad though. Note three, note two. Man, I better read those two notes. Note three, note two. Note three, use R of choke. Varies with squelch setting. I'm not gonna worry about it. Well, it was two and three. Capacitor charges on resistance measurements. Not a concern. Um Well, let's think about this. This guy is, uh, we don't have to think too much. Uh, they, uh, the instructions say what to expect, except they don't say it, they say it in terms of current, but not voltage. They say it in terms of current. I can current turn that into voltage. 22 milliamps. Oh, it's plate current, Jim. Oh, that's right, now I own. <laughs> now I remember everything. And you know what, there is a good opportunity here this, I looked right at it, this 100 ohm resistor, if you could read the voltage drop across it, that would tell me the current through here. Wait a minute, that's not enough though. Because there's a power flow going out this way. 20 micro henrys. RFC, radio frequency choke. So what they're trying to do here is keep the RF from going down this way, so we're not just trying to measure anything down here. Any that does get through, they're knocking it into the ground here. They want it all to go out this way. So this is just the DC feed. So, but wouldn't that give me the plate current? But, 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 um, so if I hit transmit and say nothing, make no 
modulation. What happens in this for radio? Um, I I think as you you know it depends on how the modulation is done. As you talk, you add power to the output of the radio. I believe. I'm not sure of that. I'm not sure of that. So if I'm reading the power out here and I'm not talking into the microphone and we're just I should talk in the microphone and look at what happens with those power meters. You can even look on the scope and see what's going on there. Maybe that's maybe that's a, a step I should take. Put in that R Y radio. Uh -huh. Oh, it's hooked in here somehow. What is that? Got this dotted line, another dotted line. Oh, that's a real mystery. I have no idea what that is. Doesn't like trying to fix something when you have no clue what the parts are doing. <laughs> in it. But we're focused here right now. I mean, if I need to understand this, I could probably get my head around it if I have to. At least I can make myself think I have my head around it. Hey, what's this one? Well, this is the uh, neutralization one here, which comes later. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, so going back, if, if this is going to put out four... Say, when they talk about the power output of a CB radio, they use some funny caveats. Uh, say, like, for instance, uh, 5 watts into the final PA. Stuff like that, uh, which I don't understand fully. But surely to goodness, the output... What is the legal output allowed? Yeah, I don't even know what that is. Let's find out real quick here. No, we won't do it by pushing that button. Right here, Le Mr. Mr. Legal Power Output CB Radio. Now, pop up an answer pretty quick. I bet right there, four watts. Now, let's see if they have some funny caveats here. Maximum legal power output in the U.S. is 4 watts. to be the same here. Unmodulated carrier. Modulation can be 4 times the carrier power. Or 16 watts peak uh, power. Peak uh, something power. And 12 watts for SSB. Yeah, that's because, uh, in fact, 12 watts is more for SSB. SSB than 16 would be for AM, as measured at the transmitter antenna connection. However, external linear amplifiers, well, I'm not doing that. So 4 is the answer, but you see there's a little bit of complications here. 4 watts for AM, unmodulated carrier. So 4 watts, unmodulated carrier. I think I got it. I think I got it. 4 watts, unmodulated carrier. L9 for plate current dip. Again, we've got to measure this plate current. Oh yeah, don't they show a hookup for this? I thought they showed... Uh, uh, okay, let me check very quickly. Right here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is one of these for... I think so. I don't think either of these voltmeters are connected to an RF pickup loop. L10. No, it's L9 is the one I'm fooling with. I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm not getting it. Connect test equipment as in section so and so. Adjust the yeah, yeah. While keeping plate current at 22 milliamps. Okay, I got. I really got to figure out how to measure this plate current safely. Plate current, 22 milliamps. That sounds like a DC reading to me. So let's let's figure out how we're going to read this plate current. That's kind of where I've been the whole time here. So I think I think across this resistor. If we read it further on, we'll have this uh, screen current in here. We don't want that happening. Got to find R46 in the radio. 
and put a meter across it. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, this is, yeah, DC, DC. That's right, DC. And I started thinking, wait a minute, this is 27 megahertz coming through here, but no, no, no. DC there. 100. I'll have to, we'll have to, this is, uh, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> okay. Well, I gotta find R46. Boy, if I can just get R46, get the equipment set up today, that'd be great. R46. Let's go hunting. Um, R, you know what? This is not the way to hunt. The way to hunt is back on the manual. Just, oh, here we are. Okay, so we're looking for R46. Wasn't it? R26. Um, let me double check what I'm looking for here, because I may have all the bolts on the schematic chip. Right. 46, no doubt about it. 46 is what I'm looking for. 46 looking here. There it is, 46. Oh, I remember this guy's hidden back under here. It's not, not this one. This one is R48. R46 is this one. So yeah, so the voltmeter was connected. My smart guy, I removed the connection. Okay, I've got to put it back on. And this one, there was some instructions about the polarity of the meter going on there. R46. Interesting. So the manual tells you to, to read the voltage drop on this 100 ohm resistor, and I figured out the same thing. Wow, pat on the back, Jim. You know, probably I read it, and that's really where I got it from. So one, one the side has a capacitor hooked up, and the other side is just resistors. And that's how I can tell which way is which. So if we look again in the schematic on 46, we see the capacitor is, so current, current flow is this way. So positive side. here. It's the negative side of the meter. It doesn't matter. My meter read negative and positive anyway. Why, why do we even care? Come on. Come on, man. Let's get, get on the ball here. Get on the ball. Okay, we'll hook up the meter. Here she is. Let's put it on DC volts. 20. Oh, 20. So the current's supposed to be 22 through a 100 ohm resistor. So 22. So the voltage, the, uh, uh, so voltage. <laughs> oh my God. What well, was with me? So we want to know what voltage appears on the 100 ohm resistor when there's. I'm really blanking out here. 22 milliamps going through it. Well, you know what? That's why we're hooking up a voltmeter. And you know what? The bloody voltmeter's already hooked up. It's this one. Okay. And just catching up here with myself. Now we're all set. I think. I think. So the objective is to get a, a voltage reading and then use the voltage reading to guide me on maintaining 22 milliamps. So I want to find out first what current is actually flowing in this circuit. And uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay, watching the meter. This meter here. You can watch it like that. How about like that? One point eight volts. Well, I really got to bring a calculator in here. So we have, let's say, two volts. Whoops, oops. Two, two volts on 100 ohms. Power equals E squared over R. 10 squared over R. 2 squared. 2 squared over R. 4 divided by 100. It's a tiny amount. That's not what I'm after, though. Dummy, I'm, I'm after the current. So the current equals uh, I equals E divided by R. E is 2. R is 100. 
So if E were 20, R would be a thousand, 20 thousandths, 20 milliamps. Wow, it's right near the 22 milliamps. It's right there. Now, did, did, did it say keep it at 22 or no higher than 22 or no lower than 22? I'm just going to take a peek myself. If I can find it, probably can't find it quickly. Bear with me here. Here it is. Connect the test equipment. But keep, keep it at 22 or less. Whichever gives the most output. Yeah. So you're adjusting this network, trying to get the maximum output while you're holding the PA current at 22. While holding the, I, I should say, plate current to be specific at 22. So I would have to work out what kind of voltage should be on the 100 ohm resistor with 22 milliamps or less, which is where we are right now, while I fiddle around with those other controls. Okay, let's do sensitivity study now. Sensitivity study. Um, how much is this voltage affected by turning the two controls, That's particularly that capacitor? Okay. Get in on the capacitor here. Okay, I'm in. How sensitive is it? There we go. You can see on the uh, scope. A tremendous variation in the output. Oh, you can hear my voice. Hello. Hello. See it up here too. Okay. Somebody says hello back. <laughs> we should jump because uh, I'm only transmitting into a into a dummy. I'm a dummy transmitting into a dummy. Okay, so what did we find out there? We found out that uh, the sensitivity on this reading isn't all that great, but meanwhile the output is going up and down like crazy. I have a fixed resistor here. So so this, 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 whoops, you didn't see the scope. All right, this scope reaction. Um, so the problem here is if you uh, just kind of ramp up the output of this thing, you will push the PA, the plate current of the PA, beyond the 22 milliamps that the designers are comfortable with. Well, that's interesting. 7061, what is the typical plate current in a 70612? Let's check that out. Okay, you know, and another thought came to mind here before I go too far. How do I know the 100 ohm resistor I'm testing across is really a 100 ohm resistor? Well, I'm going to have to shut the guy off. Shut, shut off the set here. And then we'll just read the resistance. We can just use the meter right there and see if it isn't 100. Uh, I'm staking a fair bit on this measurement. Uh, this is going to control the plate current. If I haven't got this right, and my desire to get 5,000 watts out of this, uh, I could very well overload the uh, plate tube. And I just remember now what it was I was trying to do on the right. I'm going to try to, yeah, enough talk. So put this on resistance. Oops, oops, oops. Well, there we are, 99.4. 99 and 44 is 100 percent resistive. Good. So we know we know we got a valid reading there. Okay, I'm really feeling pretty good about this. Now the objective is to get the most coming out while maintaining 22. Let, yeah, let's look at the tube. That's what I was going to do. Let's study up on the tube itself. Characteristic. understand. Well, okay, let's see if this guy gets some understanding here. It's a discussion where they're talking about two, two tubes and comparing them. What's that? RCA sheet for, okay, let's go there. Let's go there. We're going there. Oh, it really exists. Okay, fine. This will this answer, answer every question we've ever asked about this tube. For use in mobile communications equipment, operating from six cell 
storage. I hear my kitty calling me. So this is giving the uh, capacitances between the plates. There we are, maximum ratings, fantastic. 345, that's pretty much what's on this tube when uh, I hit transmit, grid number two. Plate dissipation, nine watts. So this is the whole issue with the current going through this tube, is to keep the dissipation to nine watts. Typical, here we are, plate, plate current. No, give me plate current. Plate, oh, here we are. Plate current, 38 milliamps. And there we are. Maximum signal plate current. No, don't do this to me, okay? Here we are. Peak AF. Peak AF. Peak. Don't know what AF is. Grid number one voltage, 10 volt. Zero signal plate current, 35 milliamps. Maximum signal plate current 38 so 35 is where we can run this tube at I would say typical characteristics typical plate current because well, a minimum 26 not 22 and 45 that's way off what I just came up this could be because you're operating at a lower uh, plate voltage here. What are they saying? Characteristic range of values in the design. I don't even get plate voltage. JC, JC. Am, I am I talking too fast? Low resistor, 100 watts, grid, plate. 300 volts negative. Here we are. 300 volts plate, 300 volts negative with respect to all of their electrodes tied together. Well, I don't understand what they're saying there. So we can assume, okay, so this is running with, say, 300 volts. Let's use that as in our head. Stick it in our head. 300 volts on the plate, and the most you can go is uh, 26. We got 350 on the plate. The least you can, you should go is 26. 350 on the plate. Maybe maybe this goes down a little bit. Maybe the radio designers know that, in fact, this isn't really true. You can go lower in their design for whatever reason. And why would there be a limit on how low you can go on a tube like this anyway? Probably means if you don't have this much plate current during static operation, you haven't got the right grid bias. So if you go below at 26, your grid bias is, is too low. I think that's what they're trying to say there. No, one, two. I don't really know, though, just making all that up. 500 hour intermittent life performance. Low frequency vibration performance. Now it's going to go in a vehicle. I guess these things become an issue. Okay, so now we know the story. The story is, I'll get it in my head nice and clear, 40 milliamps in the plate current and uh, we got problems. 22 is uh, actually below the minimum that the tube is rated for according to this sheet. So we could let that plate current go up quite a bit. Unless, of course, it's 22 no modulation, and the designers know when you go to talk into it, you, you, you beat the radio up that much harder. 22 in effect becomes 30, 40. I don't know. But uh, I don't know, but I'm feeling pretty good about continuing here. Feeling pretty good about continuing, but boy, it's getting pretty late. It's, it's, it's 11.30 in the morning. So where am I at now? Let's just recap. Got got a better meter, got a better uh, 50 ohm load, a safer one to transmit into. Uh, I've read the voltage on the output uh, tube, uh, the PA tube, and the current flow appears to be in order. It's, it appears to be okay. Um, I've discovered you can go as high as um, 40 milliamps. Probably that's a little too high to set this thing up but you could go to 40 milliamps beyond 40 let's put it this way beyond 40 milliamps you're risking the tube and probably some other parts in here too um, we've got a way of measuring the voltage that the set is producing across the dummy load and we can convert that into current flow if we need to 
and of course the way of doing that is uh, on the scope up here. Um, I also have my signal generator running over here. The reason is, is I'm trying to warm up my shop a little bit. <laughs> Honestly, I came in and turned some stuff on just to put some heat in here. Okay. So I don't want to do the adjustment right now. I think I'm, I think I'm just going to leave it as it is and uh, do the adjustment on the next video. It gives me more time to think today about things. Um, we, we also, uh, just to go a little further, also have a couple of different ways of monitoring the output power level coming out of this uh, transmitter while I'm adjusting it. So it looks like what I can do is I can fiddle up the power while monitoring the PA current, the plate current, and see what happens. We can see where we can go. I can, I can kind of set it to the 22 or so, and we'll see how much power we're putting out of that, because I can calculate it from the voltage measurement and the resistor. And then we can fiddle around a little more and just see where we can get to, maybe with uh, 30 milliamps of current in the uh, output tube. And then all you people in Alabama better get ready, because I, I haven't got a name yet. My, my old CB name was The Bowtie. I suppose I should keep that. The bow tie. Breaker, breaker. It's a bow tie from Ontario. Hello, Alabama. Okay, see you on the next video.